Come one, come all to this spooky Rimworld adventure. Welcome to Rimworld Blood Feast. <laughs> but, I hear you ask, hypothetical straw man, or literal but in this case, I, get out of here. But what is Rimworld Blood Feast? Blood Feast is the largest mod pack I have ever created. Which is why it also took so long. The goal of which is to build your own vampire empire entirely from scratch. And when I say build your own vampire empire, I mean build your own vampire empire. Not only are we going to bring back all of the mechanics from the Ohms Generation series, with a few exceptions. We're also including the return of one of my favorite remod mods that has just been updated, sort of, to Remod 1.3. And that is, well, the Empire mod. And that, with a whole new diplomacy system, a shattered empire worth fearing, the constant threat of internal rebellions, slave uprisings, a slew of thematic mods, and the most vampiric ideology I could possibly concoct from nearly a dozen combined mods, we're not just building a vampire empire, we're building a vampire society. Because we all live in a society. With traitorous backstabbing colonists vying for power and leadership, splinter groups and ideology schisms, not to mention an entire economy where the workers are also breakfast. And all of this is going to be built by a single, very angry vampire. Anne Gween. God, I'm wasted here. Now it is true that this is similar to the Ohm series, but this time around, rather than a kind, benevolent leader that is Ohm, we have a bloodthirsty, vengeful, maniacal vampire who's going to build an empire on the backs of slaves and bodies of the empire. She's like Ohm, except with far more war crimes. So many, many, many war crimes. And onto the main course, something that would have been impossible if not for ideology, something that's going to make this series unlike anything else we've ever done. Our ideologian, the Blood Pack. To begin with, this is a fluid ideologian, technically the first fluid ideologian we've ever been able to play with, seeing as the last one horribly broke. So did this one, but I fixed it ahead of time. Our only starting meme is individualist, because in vampire society, the cream rises to the top. The deity of this vampire society, well as the last surviving vampire, it makes sense that it would be and Green herself. The precepts are so incredibly convoluted, they take up an entire page, and I think they speak for themselves for the most part, but it is a combination of traditionalism. She is from the medieval times, she is into high society, high life, big comfort. And having a medieval mindset, of course, she's not above capital punishment, torture, execution, slavery. Now, the vampire aspects of the ideology are going to be the most defining factor here. The attitudes towards death are markedly different to the attitudes compared to, say, the Empire. Vampires don't care about death. They've died once. And though they may not be emotionally distraught about it, a vampire that kills another vampire dishonorably will still be considered a murderer. Darkness is a huge aspect of vampirism, with not only sunlight being deadly, but the dark itself being preferred. Combat and darkness gains bonuses, lighting is to be to a minimum, and eclipses are considered beautiful. We have three key roles in our ideology. The prince or princess being the leader, the highest ranked vampire, whether that is the strongest or one with the most allies politically. The high bishop to ensure that there is some sort of code of honor between the vampires so it's not just complete chaos. And then the highly revered medical specialist to make sure that the slaves are tasty enough. Our rituals are fairly standard for the most part. You have funerals, gladiator jewels, and high balls. There is one, though, that is different to all the others, the blinding ritual. In our vampire society, a slave or a prisoner that distinguishes themselves may be allowed to become a ghoul, a person bonded to the vampire permanently, who are eternally loyal to that vampire in exchange for some of the vampire's powers. That ghoul will have to undergo the blinding ritual. In exchange for their power, they have to take their sight so they can't turn on their vampire masters 
but there may be rarely something very, very special coming out of that. In our society, human slaves are at the bottom of the hierarchy with ghouls coming above that and vampires at the very top. But a ghoul may be blessed with psychic abilities and become a very powerful asset to the vampire that created them. And most importantly of all, Bat. Thank you. Oh, and to spice things up a little bit, I've made us what I think is a suitably vampire-themed UI. A nice blood red coat on Rimworld. So the final thing before we begin building whatever it is we're about to build, Anguin herself. In terms of stats, very modest, I think. Melee, high, 12 of double passion. Social, pretty high as well, 14, double passion. Composed, bloodlust, and beautiful. All of which I think suits her clan which is Ventru. And for those of you who don't know, the Rim of Man is Vampires mod is based on the World of Darkness vampires. For any of you who've seen the old CK2 series and CK3 series, it's the same vampires as those. Ventru vampires are very noble and proud, almost to a fault. They always know what is best and they are always happy to lead. So I thought that was perfect for the Languin. They are incredibly manipulative and incredibly persuasive. And as we level up Anguin with experience and she gains more skills, we'll be able to spend them on these various different vampiric powers. We'll take a look at those when we actually get there. And last of all, to reiterate, we are playing with the Empire mod. We have our own little faction here, the Camarilla, and that will eventually allow us to set up settlements that will pay a tithe over to our main base. But I think as just a single character in a field, we're quite a long way away from that. So then, finally, after two days, Let's get started. I guess the first thing to do, survey the map. And yeah, I mean, I, it's quite a cool map this time around. It's some really special mechanics from map designer here. I was thinking, big old city out here in the field, the slums for the slaves and the ghouls. And then into the mountain, we can carve a proper medieval fortress. Now, the technology goes as far as it regularly does in base game remod, but a true vampire castle powered with all sorts of modern technology, I thought was quite a cool combo. But before we can do any of that, I think we better build a shed. Or, oh no. <laughs> or it's taking me so long to do the intro, she's starving. And no, what are you doing to that rat? Uh, she, she drained it dry. She just drained that rat completely dry. So unsurprisingly, if vampires don't get to feed for too long, they will go into a frenzy and they'll just eat whatever they can find. In that case, it could be any of our people. So we do need to be very, very careful with that. How thirsty can you be? Good lord. Anne's fury has come to an end. Thank you, Anne. Now, can we finally build that shed? Perfect. Now we can really begin. I think the first thing's first. We really do need to get some sort of defenses in action. She is going to be hunted by the Empire immediately. They begin hostile to us. And you might have figured this out already, but sunlight on this planet is very, very low. Not something that we will never have to worry about. So we do need to be a little bit careful with our vampires still. But the big problem is going to be growing enough food and being able to sustain a whole city of, of ghouls or slaves on the backs of no agriculture. Well, or agriculture, but entirely mushroom agriculture, which makes things a lot more difficult. Not to mention that non-vampires in combat are going to be heavily hindered, which works great for us against certain enemies like the Empire, but does mean that if any of our ghouls or any of our slaves get into combat, they're going to get absolutely shredded. And we can't turn everybody into a vampire. Or we could, but it probably would backfire pretty fast. For the time being, then, let's throw up a pretty decently sized perimeter wall for something. It's something to fall back to. I guess the regular naked brutality issues of food aren't really going to be a problem because we can just tell us to go out there and sippy on animals. But to reiterate, of course, there's very little sunlight. So there's not going to be a huge amount of plants and there's not going to be a huge amount of animals as a result. We might have to start a farm for animals where we feed them mushrooms. We could blitz up mushrooms and raiders to make a delicious kibble. Then we have to make sure we've got a good balance of slaves, making sure we're breeding together the strong ones, killing off the weak ones. Any old slaves can get completely eaten. I, I, I don't know how we're going to do it. You know, let's not worry about that for now. As a big part of the challenge of this series is going to be coming from trying to keep a city of humans alive in perpetual darkness to be able to feed our vampires with. I've got Dub's bad hygiene, so I thought it was a perfect fit for this. The challenge of providing fresh, clean water to your colony when your colony is also dinner is... <laughs> it's an entirely separate challenge. Not to mention nobody wants a stinky breakfast. Well, that's not true. I've seen some of the people in Discord. Some of you definitely do. Now, Anguin as a Ventru vampire is going to want luxury and comfort. Uh, but right now, Anguin being a medieval vampire also doesn't know anything. Uh, genuinely does not know a goddamn thing. Do we really have nothing at all? Do we not have like a slab we can build for her? 
Oh, no. <laughs> really? There's nothing... A coffin. Ah, a burial receptacle for the dead. Wait, that's not something for her to sleep in, is it? If we kill and eat enough things, we could build a tent. I think that's probably a much better start than to trying to build a, an opulent palace to kick things off. This house is going to be turned into premium goat storage. Or really anything storage, as long as we can skin it. Uh, except for, like, pears. I suppose you could skin a pear. Go drink that ram. Be careful there, little Anne. It's getting surprisingly bright outside. Ah, look at that. And it's getting a level in vampirism. Perfect. Now we can actually take a look and see some of her Ventru abilities. So we've got two points available to spend. We can go for Presence. That gives a plus three permanent social bonus for each level in Presence. Enemies nearby increase their attack cooldown by 5%. Wow. So with that, we'd be able to intimidate and recruit slightly faster. Or we've got the choice of Dominate level one, which allows us to mesmerize, temporarily stun, and close the target's mental state. Oh, that could be very good. We could stun our enemies with that, sure, but we could also use it against hostile vampires. Either enemy vampires or most likely people from our own faction. Or finally, we can go for Fortitude, guaranteed shrugging off one point of damage from attacks. Wow, that's pretty good. Just like a flat percentage reduction. We're going to go with, I think, Presence. Given that we want to build this colony as soon as possible, gaining that plus three social is massive to kick things off. So from just those few animals, we've got so many different types of bone. Medium hide, buckets of blood, very appropriate, and fat. What do we do with fat? Now, how do we turn that deer into a tent? <laughs> the classic room world question. We don't have any sort of tanning rack, but we do have this hay rack. So I guess we'll try that to start off with. Insert hay? What about insert deer? Oh, God, not... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is all from the medieval overhaul mod. So right now, very similar to Anne Green, I'm completely lost. Maybe there's a chance she's... Too stupid to know to tan hides yet. Ah, there you go. Oh no, that poor thrombo. <laughs> Once upon a time, little Anne Green, there was a great colony founder. And you, my friend, get the honor of following in the footsteps of this legendary colony founder by standing in a corner in the dark and thinking about things. <laughs> and I want you to think about how hard you're going to tan that deer. Please hurry up. Well, she's got an intellectual of nine with a single passion. Think hard, Anne. Oh, good God, that is slow. Maybe think a little bit harder, Anne. <laughs> I could have thought of that leather tanning by now. I would have thought about that leather tanning long ago. I do love the idea of this extremely proud, noble vampire standing in a dirty shed filled with blood and guts, thinking about things. Ah, classic reward. Oh, and great news, everybody. It's Anne Green's birthday. Anne has reached the biological age of 25. Anne reaps the benefits of immortality and suffers no side effects. She also suffers no benefits to her birthday at all because she gets to spend it in a cold, dark shed filled with guts. Thinking. Thinking very hard. It took her so long to think about leather, the bloody season changed. But now we can build the finest goatskin tent this side of the rim. At long last, Anne, you can hide from the... Tyranny of the sun? Oh, bollocks. How do we make tanning liquor? How would you make tanning liquor? You would ferment something. You would boil it up. A cooking table. We need stone. Oh, God, it never ends. In that case, a stone cutting spot. Oh, she's so angry. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Hold on. No elders minus 10. We have no elders to share wisdom with us. Oh, because it's taking a biological age, not a chronological age. Okay, well, hold on a second. Much better. There we go. She kind of forgot she was 3,200 years old. We cut the chunks into blocks. We get raided by the kinship of Borgatran. The hell of a kinship of Borgatran. Oh my god. <laughs> Just randomly turned up with two knives to stab Anne. Jokes on you, Borgatran. You should have bought more knives. Ooh, 12 plants. That was really good. Try not to kill a man. Just... Just send him. Carefully. Okay, nice. He bought beer. Oh, great news. Oh, she's a vampire. She can't... She can't actually drink it, but... And look! 23 pine trees. Wowee. <laughs> I mean, that in itself is also kind of horrifying, right? Wow, he's really not bad at all, huh? Coordinated gives shooting accuracy, melee hit chance. Constantly bemused. Minus three permanent mood effects. That's okay. You don't need to be happy here. None of us need to be happy here. <laughs> Ah, oh, now this is probably worth mentioning quickly. We can embrace Armadillo, which will make him a vampire one generation lower than Anne. Anne is a seventh generation vampire, and that would make Armadillo 
an eighth generation vampire, so slightly weaker, but still pretty powerful. We can also give him Vitae to turn him into Anne's ghoul, which... I think he's a Batman villain. That will make him permanently bound to Anne and eternally loyal in exchange for a little bit of power. Or alternatively, we chuck him in the meat shed. Okay, good as new. Any permanent damage? Oh, she only went and tore his leg off. Yeah, no, that's fine. Thank you, Anne. Feline presence. An omen, maybe. A stray cat has wandered onto your territory. Oh. Now, we are playing with the HP Lovecraft Storyteller. We will occasionally get omens, portents of potentially terrible, awful things to come. Or maybe it's just an adorable kitty cat. Or maybe a portent of evil and doom. Or maybe it's just a friendly little cat. Or it's evil and doom. I haven't decided yet. Now, like I was saying before, Armadillo rudely interrupted us. We're going to make blocks out of chunks. We turn blocks into a cooking table. At the cooking table, we turn wood into tanning liquor. We use the tanning liquor to make leather. And then finally, with all of those things, we can build an awful, awful tent. Perfect. <laughs> it's not quite the luxury vampire empire I had in mind, but I suppose it's a good start. I guess now, given that we've got an actual person here who needs water, we're gonna have to dig a well. Wasn't really expecting to have to worry about this so soon. Bloody humans. Cactico Pact have lost Italia to the Exodus Imperium after failing to repel the invaders. Where on earth is Italia? Oh, that's Italia. Well, they've certainly gotten quite close. <laughs> I mean, come on now. What am I doing? She's no dumb green rock man. She's a noble vampire lady. She doesn't just sit in a dark room and think about things. She would have a dedicated and very comfortable research building. <laughs> ah, yes, the luxury thinking stool. <laughs> We, we can't actually build any furniture right now. <laughs> I'm really not sure why the thinking stool is so damn funny, but it really, really is. Oh, Mushroom Mastery already is so good. And it couldn't have come at a more perfect time because the darkness has taken its toll on the map. And everything is dead. You have some tiny stunted trees. The very occasional patch of grass for an animal to graze on. But more or less everything is gone at this point. But mushrooms are our big saving grace right now. We couldn't have got those at a more perfect time. The thinking stool is a proud vampiric tradition. Passed down from vampire to vampire. <laughs> and while she thinks very hard sat down comfortably, why don't we take a look through everything and see what we've actually got to work with right now. There's a lot of things under structure. Wow. Some really nice medieval looking buildings here. Ah! And all that thinking on the stool has leveled her up. Production tab is very limited. We have some very fancy gloomy deco as well there for storage. Bricks. I assume that's a pile the bricks up as storage rather than bricks to store things in. No power at all. Wow, look at that. Security, we're very, very limited too. Misc, we have more or less your default room or things. There is so little for us to be able to build. Wow. Now, because it's a planet of more or less permanent darkness and very limited resources, there is going to be outbreaks of war almost constantly. And we have news of war between the Bakken Pact and the Pezza Covenant. Whoever the hell those guys are. The Bakken Pact and the Somebody Covenant. Ah. Uh, whoa, three level up points ran. I mean, all she's done right now is sit down and think, so that makes a lot of sense. Why don't we spread the skills out a little bit? So we'll go one point in Mesmerize for the stun ability and one point in Fortitude, so we're a little bit better in combat. She is ultimately just wearing a medieval dress. And now we can choose a level two power, so we can go into, again, a higher tier of presence and gain that plus three permanent social bonus. Sleep. The tug will fall asleep for about 20 seconds or longer, becoming completely incapacitated. Wow, that could be very, very good. I wonder if we could just walk up to them and carry them to prison at that point. That could be really, really valuable if we've got a very, very powerful character that we want to turn into a ghoul or, again, maybe even another vampire. Or more fortitude to make her even stronger still. I think I like the sound of sleep. Now, because that is a level two skill, we have to put two points into that one, so no use quite yet. Armadillo? You haven't even done anything yet. Well, I suppose we'll do something about it. Now, Armadillo, in my opinion, isn't good enough to be a ghoul. He's definitely not good enough to be a vampire either. The guy is already 57. We have faster aging so that we can have the human aspect of our city live and grow and die and flourish and decline and whatever happens depending on the world while our vampires stay exactly the same. And let's be honest, 57, that's old age. 
you'll be dead any time now. And of course, I'm not talking about the 5% of my audience that happen to be within the 55 to 65 age bracket. You guys are, you guys are fine. You're youthful. You're vigorous. Uh, Patreon.com slash Mr. Samuel Streamer. <laughs> now, like I was saying, at the age of 57, Armadillo is essentially one bad winter off of being dead. I guess we'll just do it the easy way. We'll convert him and then we'll enslave him. If he's gonna die of the flu, he might as well die of the flu out there in the fields growing us plenty of mushrooms. Oh, God. Along with his leg that Anne tore off, he's also literally almost blind in both of his eyes. And he has major food poisoning. And now he's got the flu. <laughs> Given that Anne, though, is this very persuasive, suave, enthralling vampire, it probably won't take too long to convert him over. It's pretty much the only thing she's got going for her right now. And she chooses to use that skill by talking to him about the friggin' weather. We're having a nice evening. <laughs> you can't just tell him he's having a nice evening, and The room is filled with fat and vomit. He is not having a nice evening. <laughs> on the plus side, we'll spend that new blood point on the next level of sleep. To be honest, given that we need to build the city bloody fast, I think we might just go into presence at this point for the big old social bonus we're gonna get from that. The further she levels up, of course, the harder it's going to be to level up. So we might want to, say, go all into these combat powers. But I think in the long term, it'll be a much bigger benefit early on to be able to recruit people super, super fast. <laughs> no way. Buffy the destitute. A desperate refugee named Buffy is approaching. No, no, no. I'm not falling for that one. Buffy claims to have been chased from her home by a vengeful ex-lover. She begs for your permission to stay at the colony for five days. Not a chance. That has to be a feature of the Rim of Madness mod, right? Or just some insane coincidence that the first refugee we get is named after arguably one of the most famous vampire slayers. I'd say it goes probably Van Helsing, then Buffy. And then, of course, Abraham Lincoln. All right, fine. Okay, Buffy, prove me wrong. First question, are you any good? Uh, artistic tendable passion. Could be quite nice to get somebody in the- Ah, there we go. Either way, could be quite nice to get somebody in this colony who is good at making the place a bit more opulent. And cares about that high society, the comfort, the art. Also, she's called Buffy. I'm not gonna lie, I might make her into a ghoul just because of that. And since it looks like we'll be here for a while, Buffy thinks you should give your faction a name. What should our faction be called? The Moral Treaty of Erbo. No, I don't think so. Comment section you have until tomorrow to impress me. Otherwise, I'm naming this colony some horrific puns. We need a faction name and a settlement name. We'll just give ourselves a placeholder for the time being. Perfect. I just feel that the opportunity of making Buffy a ghoul is too good to pass up. We are, however, going to have to arrest her before we can do anything with her. So I'm afraid to say, Buffy, you're in a lot of trouble, my friend. Come on. That's it. Buffy? What the hell is that? Buffy, more like Puffy. <laughs> My God, she bought beer and a smoke leaf joint as well. Buffy's the whole party. Armadillo has seen the light, or I guess lack thereof, and has converted over to the blood pact. 52% certainty. And now little Armadillo, welcome to the team. Then when Buffy is converted, I guess we'll recruit her as a full colonist and then turn her into a ghoul. You probably could in... Oh, no. I'm sure you probably could enslave ghouls, but given that they're loyal to you anyway, there's not much point. We will still treat her with equal disdain and hatred, though. Don't worry. Oh, <laughs> you fool. We're not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with us. Drink that cougar. Oh, my God. The elk might kill it. <laughs> Roasted. Wow. Good work, Anne. Boom. There we are. Development points changed from one to two because we enslaved a prisoner. And those development points are what we'll use to develop the blood pack with the fluid ideology system to add a few more memes. Two out of ten right now. We need a total of ten to add something new. I guess I'll build another little community, another gated community for the slaves where we don't have to look at them. Local Rimworld player endorses slavery. In other news, the sky is blue and grass is green. Local YouTube gamer endorses slavery. <laughs> Although, according to the Washington Post, that's just a given at this point. Armadillo. Armadillo, what are we going to do with you? You are head mushroom grower. Congratulations, my friend. And then in Buffy's spare time, you know, when she's not creating art to spruce up the thinking room, she can deliver Armadillo a thorough beating and try and keep him in line a little bit. Oh, no vampires are getting slayed today, Buffy. Well, 
I mean, not unless you play your cards right, of course. And has successfully turned Buffy away from unity post dalism and towards Blood Pact. What are you? What are you doing with that rat, Armadillo? Should you bring that over, huh? Oh, now hang on. What would happen if we just gave her Vitae now? Would it just immediately recruit her? You know what? I'm going to try it. A little bit concerning that you can give her Vitae as she sleeps, given that... Oh, there you go. Given that Anne is feeding Buffy her blood. It's a little weird. So now Buffy will have to feed on Anne, which is a very bizarre backwards world, but that's just how ghouls work. She is still a prisoner, though. Oh, that's so bizarre. We should release her back out into the wilderness now. <laughs> and until we get mushrooms, Armadillo's job is very, very simple. He gets to stand here all day, every day, cutting blocks. Big vampiric castles don't build themselves after all. Medical emergency. Armadillo, what's wrong with him? Are you good? <gasps> the flu. Oh, God, what if he dies now? It's because we don't have a slave bed, so there's nowhere to tend him. It's very silly. Quick, draw a rectangle on the floor. That'll save him. Hey, Armadillo, go lie down. Watching the friggin' sunrise, there's no sunshine on this planet. 85% flu, 88% immunity, and 10 quality of 12%. I think Armadillo might be dead. You know what? That wasn't nearly as bad as I expected. He's actually gonna make it. Ah! Oh, and right on cue, we are now masters of mushroom. And... You can't eat a black cat? Oh, that's gotta be what, like 200 years bad luck? Oh, you absolute fool. I can't believe you've done this. Oh, would you look at that? The 12th of Jugas. Everybody knows that's premium mushroom growing day. <laughs> so I'm gonna build a big wall around this fertile soil here. What on earth is a propaganda drone? Someone is emitting a propaganda wave that spreads the ideology. If you don't destroy this, your settlers will start to believe in a different ideology. What the hell? They're trying to break Anne's hypnotism. You can't do that. Propaganda generator. Oh, it's miles away. We would have to brave the Caxo Forest. Nobody ever comes out of the Caxo Forest alive. No, I'll be honest. I've never heard of the Caxo Forest before in my life. Wowee. Two turrets and one pirate. Whoa, they're here already? We've only just invented mushrooms and we've already got to deal with the empire. Never sass, look at you. Man's turned up with a solid gold helmet. <laughs> a full flak outfit and a prestige recon helmet along with three knives, which I think is a little bit overkill. Oh, he can sidecast as well. He's glacial pinhole. As frightening as he looks, I think he'll be no trouble at all for Anne. Then you can really say Anne in a menacing way, can you? Get him, Anne. Bring him down. Careful, he's got three knives. Hang on. Here's an idea. What if we just say, go to sleep? Never sass. Go to sleep. Uh, yeah, Anne, actually use the. Uh, Anne, in your own time, please. Maybe you can't use powers in melee range? Send him. <laughs> That's so good. The question is, is he any good as a character, though? He's a freeholder. Interesting. Social 16. That's crazy. We don't really need a social character. Easily amused gastronomist wanderlust. Ah. Uh, never sass. I'm going to send a message to the Empire. We're going to take his clothes. That, that bit is very important. We then feed him Anne's blood. Make him permanently addicted. And with that, we let him go. We send him right back to the Empire. This will be overkill, they say, sending a fully armored man with an assault rifle. And he returns, trembling, broken, and addicted to Anne. The Empire wants to declare war. I'll show them how you declare war. And this is probably about the point where they send six or seven cataphracts and we die. Hey, that's an idea. Given that Anne wasn't using the tent anyway, I thought, let's give it to Armadillo because that way he can at least get something out of it. But then I thought, why not give every single slave in the city just a tent? Not a house, not a bed, not anything like that. They get just a tent. The ghouls can get some houses, basic rundown wooden houses with very simple furniture. And then the vampires get the highest form of living, the royal double beds, that type of thing. And you know, I think for Anne's first few days here, this isn't too bad. We've humiliated and enslaved the first raider that turned up at our base. We've turned Buffy into a ghoul, which is incredibly high tier. And the first soldier the Empire sent to our base leaves physically and mentally broken. That's how you declare war. And now that all the explaining and the boring stuff is out the way, we can really begin focusing on building our vampire empire. Gotta find a better way to say that. 
Now, if you have any ideas, any contributions to either the mod pack or the series theming as a whole, any cool ideas that we could build into our Vampire City, ideas for the systems that we have in place, the hierarchy, the ideology, anything like that, it is early enough in the series where we can make any changes we want reasonably. So I'm open to any and all suggestions to make this the greatest vampire empire we've got going. And who knows, maybe tomorrow we'll actually get enough people to make a full-on empire and start exploring the world itself, being able to put out some other settlements in there in the world. But in the meantime, of course, thank you all for watching, and I hope you truly enjoy the adventures of Anne. And if you do want to play along with the mod pack, I hope you enjoy the mod pack, because a lot of work went into getting this one working decently, a lot of load order, reordering, a lot of mod settings as well. As always, all of that will be available in the description. At the end of the video, I'll have a few tutorials on how to get that set up and to play along if you want to either play along as and by using the save that I will provide here or starting our own fresh Vampire Imperium. And finally, of course, I should say a big thank you to everybody for your patience over the past couple of days. The actual size of this mod pack, given that it is essentially just the ohm generations mod pack with even more expansion on it less of the tribalism but more of the kind of fantasy elements and especially gameplay bonuses for the empire themselves to make them actually a formidable force there's been so much effort that's gone into this one so again thank you for your patience with that one and the biggest thank you of all of course goes over to the patrons without which i would not have the time to spend the best part of two days bug fixing and eliminating mods and setting up the mod packs and doing everything that goes into setting up a whole new series. It's certainly the biggest time sink I've got with, with any part of this job. So thank you all for your support over there. A big thank you goes out to especially Valkyrie, in the incredible Gurren, Jack Blacksheep, R9471, Dagon, Chris, Nikki Sticks, Chris Schenk, Dranmere, Thickquack62, Long Darts, Mega Oscar Pone Jackal 31 Bravo and Feraldus for today's executive producer tier patrons. Thank you all for your support. And a thank you as well to Frobear, Atreus Sen, Septimulus, Miscreant, Deirdre, Adam S, Sinker, Erotha, Slinger, Blaticus, Warsheep, Canopus, Ad Infinitus, Mr. Cases, Zega the Chaos King, Duke, Ever Vigilant One, and Remdel. On the subject of Patreon as well, while we're here, we should get plenty of names this series. There has been quite the Patreon backlog for names, just because we do ultimately get more patreon name requests than we do actual characters in game but this time around because it is a faster aging series there should be plenty of people so hopefully we can start working through that and again thank you all for your patience stay tuned for install guide instructions whatever else i think is necessary to throw in